can work with the database. But if you're looking at uh, doing complex billing and uh, code rejecting or routing based on something that is in the database, uh, the code adds up. So at some point, it's better to just write a query in Active Record and get it, call it a day. How does a version talk to platform? First of all, AHN is the official abbreviation because of the name is too long. Um, asterisk is uh, reached through async AGI. It used to be AGI and AMI in version one. Addition two only uses async AGI, which is basically AGI over AMI. FreeSwitch uses the inbound event socket, so in both cases, and also in the Prism case, which is mm. through Rio, it's a version that will connect to the platform. So we're going in, in not, uh, so a version is, is a client, not a server. So how does an addition application work? Aside from configuration, you have call controllers and routing. Routing means work which call way. controllers in both based on some condition, usually a phone number, could be time of the day, could be any other, it's uh, similar to the Rails routing. Um, then the addition command provides uh, what you need to basically create and run an application. This is only a 30 minute presentation, so I won't be going through the real basics because they're well documented. I would, I'd like to show you what you can do and then you can dig in. So call controllers hold the application logic. The run method is what is the entry point, so it was used to run the controller. And uh, this is different from, say, a web controller where every method will be an action. Here, the run method is what is invoked for that controller. As you can see, this is a very simple example. This controller answers the call because if you don't answer, you're going to be using early media by default, so it's uh, built in. Play something, whistles, and then hang up. Also, hang up is, it has to be explicit because otherwise the controller will run until the end of the code. Well, if so, in that case, uh, that hang up is redundant, as it will hang up anyway because the call is over, but it might not be the case. So we can handle playback, menus, user input, and recording in a transparent fashion, very simply. We have a very good configuration system, and which allows you uh, to have configuration that is also self-documented and can uh, automatically import values from environment va uh, variables. So you can just run your uh, production with uh, something setting the AMV variables, and that's all you need. Uh, there's a good plugin architecture that we, we use later. And routing is very good and pretty, pretty complex, but also simple to use if you know what you're doing. Testability, this, uh, all addition applications are fully testable using RSpec and um, if you're so inclined, Cucumber, using the helpers we've developed. And also, in general, controllers are just Ruby classes. So you don't need anything special unless you're doing functional testing. If you mock at the correct level, tests will just work. So sounds great, yeah? But extensions.conf does it all. No, it doesn't. Stop using extensions.com for applications. <laughs> so demo time. So this is a little longer as a controller. I like putting code in my uh, slides because uh, it's all in one place. But uh, there's also GitHub repo with everything you see now. Uh, so this controller basically will uh, ask you for menu, will ask you for to, if you want to test input or record a message. If mm -hmm. you press 1, <coughs> notice we have timeout, invalid, and failure support. So timeout is when the user doesn't press anything, Depression or in case of multi-digit input, it just presses one digit and then stands there. Invalid it's will uh, tell the user that uh, his input does not match one of the yeah. possibilities. And uh, failure will, uh, after a set number of tries, three tries in this case, yeah. will tell the user, I couldn't get your input. So this is a pretty uh, complex state machine, uh, which is usually case for a menu, reduced to a simple and usable DSL. And depending on what you click here, it will go either to enter number, which will ask the user using the sound for a number, and then just play it back, or record a message. Recordings are saved to uh, in a file that double slash um, format, so to play it back in asterisk, we actually need to clean it up, remove file and remove dot wave, because as you know, asterisk plays files without a sanction. So let's get to the demo, which involves throwing out of So I have an addition application running and, ad and an asterisk application running on my machine. I will just dial. Press 1 to test input. Press 2 to leave a message. Please enter a number. 
that's all. Uh, I'm probably missing a sound file here because we should say you press three. Recording is more of the same, just ask you for recording and then we'll save everything in, um, save it in a file. This is the addition console. This is pretty powerful. Now I set it to debug to show you that everything that comes in and out of Asterisk is translated to an internal addition event so we can handle any event that happens in a transparent manner. Uh, we usually run at a little less verbose uh, state or otherwise it's very difficult to go on working. So this was not probably not a very interesting demo, but at the same time it shows what you can do. So events, addition allows to trace and react to events. So uh, you can send commands, but you can also do uh, stuff based on what the server is telling you. Uh, you can use guarded handlers. Guarded handlers is a library we use uh, to define events handlers. So you can Absolutely. all classes, anything in an addition app, mm -hmm. can set an event handler that will be asynchronously called when some when that event pops up and execute the block accordingly. And you can also just run uh, a blo an events block like the old addition one, which is the way actually I prefer to handle recurring events. So this code goes in a separate file and it will just handle all events from PunchBlock. What's PunchBlock? PunchBlock is just the underlying library for addition that uh, has the uh, task of uh, getting the events into the system. So all PunchBlock in this context means all events. All events will be published on a Faraday connection. So what you do is distribute events to browsers for with web sockets, for example. You could be doing uh, a simple dashboard that shows which of your C peers are online at any given moment, what they're doing, if they are on call, uh, if they are waiting for the, in a queue, or whatever any other events you want to handle. So this brings up to the second demo. If I can just bring it up. Hmm. Which is events. So this is yeah. a uh, the fastest way to show you this is just to turn off blink for a moment. So as you can see, I turn off blink mm. and I got the unregistered event. I got this unregistered event in my browser. Obviously, in this scenario, I'm just pushing whatever the uh, inspect for the, for the event is to the browser. You could be doing any kind of logic with this. I'm back to being registered, and I got pushed up to, to fail. So the ability to uh, interoperate with any different system is, mm, I think, what sets the addition apart from other solutions. And uh, we will build in some pretty cool stuff with it, too. Good. <coughs> so some plans by getting one third thing. Plugins. So what you just uh, what uh, no no it's not what you just saw. This is another plugin. Uh, for example, uh, there is a lot of plugins for addition. Uh, most of them uh, involve uh, some functionality we take we took out from core, such as there's an addition asterisk plugin that gives you execute uh, and VG execute and all the other methods that are not in core any longer because we rely on Raya, which is a cross-platform protocol. Uh, Virginia is a plugin I built okay. that embeds a real app in uh, your application. What's a real app? It's simply a simple web server. So you can do this. Addition will pop up a server on the port you, you tell it to. And uh, uh, has anybody else used the Sinatra here? Well, okay. So, but anyway, Sinatra is a simple DSL that allows you to define uh, very short and simple web applications. What, you're, what we're saying here is react to a get on the dial URL, so it will be localhost this and that slash dial, by doing this. What we're doing is an originate, which telephony people know what it does. So we're gonna call the number. What's cool is that we can make it, when the call is connected, we can have it drop into a one of our controllers. So we can say, ask people if they want to receive a call. Our customers use this to do robo dialing, which we'll see later. So basically they dial up to people, ask them if they're interested into a uh, commercial offer by uh, using uh, TTS. If they're interested, they drop in the controller that takes them to a, a, a human sales rep. So they can have the minimum number amount of sales rep and still get a lot of sales because uh, their uh, experience proved that uh, 
people will hang up it, 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 if it's TTS or if it's a human, if they're not interested, they will hang up anyway. So using TTS allows them to have very few people handling calls. Second demo time. So what we're doing here is, I, this code is all live. I brought this up on, um, on my machine. And what you do is simply when I click this button, uh, the server would dial me 100, ask me if I want to take the call. If I want to take the call, I will be connected to the other number, which is 200. Just by clicking a button on the browser. So now uh, 100 has been dialed and it's been connected to 200, which is the other user, and now they're talking. Hello. Hi. Hi. Would like to buy a used car? So that's how it works. We sold the used car. <laughs> Is it? So I think you're sold now, right? You want to see more? <laughs> Great. So uh, I was thinking of I will actually cap off my presentation by going through some of our what our customers do as Mojolingo, which is not to say uh, it's not to do any publicity to anyone. It's just because real life use cases are what people use to decide if they're interested in the framework or not. No one wants a product that is not used because it means it not, will not be supported or probably is not good enough. So let's start with uh, my personal flagship project because I built the thing. Um, Ring Plus is uh, an MVNO and MVNE, which means they are a mobile virtual network operator or enabler. Uh, it's um, simply a cell phone company that doesn't have its own network but rents uh, the radio space from a larger carrier. And uh, they built everything uh, to be able to also sell this service as a package to other people interested in becoming their own phone uh, provider. Uh, their goal is also to get into companies and uh, have them have their own phone provider to get costs lower. They do over-the-top applications, so they do um, music ringtones, uh, billing, uh, recharging, all stuff. And they also have a very interesting functionality that is in-call apps. So while you're speaking to someone else and say the person is uh, uh, telling you how to get to this house, I always forget those directions, and I, usually you're in the car, so you don't have it, and you do not have anything to write it down. Just press five; will take you to the in call without breaking the call. Will take you to a menu that uh, you can configure, where say you have one as record this call. You press one; some an announcer tells people in the call that they're being recorded for the time being. Your friend tells you where he lives. You press one again; recording goes down. You find it in your uh, on your smartphone in the companion application for Ring Plus. So you can listen to it again, and that's just one of the uh, the uses. Most exotic uses involve uh, automated translation between two parties that don't speak the same language. We've been experimenting with that. Obviously, the barrier there is the quality of ASR and uh, uh, translation services. So, but it's still interesting as a proof of concept. And addition here powers all call logic, billing, and features. Sprint, which is the underlying provider, just gives us a set pipe that ties into our servers. We handle everything else, from routing to billing to all the apps and features. If by phone, if by phone is um, basically is an uh, an ad support company. What they do is uh, when you place an ad, they give you uh, different phone numbers for every medium you're using. So you have a phone number for newspaper, phone number for the web, and phone number for um, SMS marketing. And uh, they basically use this to measure which channels are better for your business. So all numbers go automatically to the same menu or uh, IVR. And they also do a hosted IVR for the company. So say you want to do uh, phone marketing, but you don't have a structure for that, they will provide you with a hosted IVR that leads people through the choices you decide and then just uh, to a sales trap if you want to. And it's also the host, uh, ad tracking, as I said, and lead tracking. So uh, after you get called, they provide you with a platform that will have all the data for the call, how long it was, the phone number, time of the day, as the person called uh, or the system before or not. All of this is uh, powered by addition. It, this is actually a very complex addition. One application we are in the process of porting to addition two, but we can still do that. 
And so, PHRG. These are pretty large companies, only they're not known in Europe, especially PHRG, because PHRG is the largest American provider of renovation. Uh, you know that American houses usually built out of panels and um, not much in, in the way of brick and, uh, bricks and concrete. So basically what they sell is uh, renovating your house by replacing entire sections of it, whether it win it's windows, an entire wall, or doors. So they're not related to IT directly. But at the same time, that th these are our largest customer per call volume. So what happens is that they do that robot dialing thing I explained earlier. They have a system that has prospects in it. The system will go pick up the prospects, dial them, uh, an automated voice will ask them if they would like to speak to a sales representative, and uh, if they accept, they go, they go place it in a queue and speak to a live rep. Mm -hmm. Another thing they do is uh, appointment confirmation. So you are, uh, you're interested, you tell them you are, you tell them you, the sales rep will come to your house at a certain time, you will get a call the day before or whatever you send it to that uh, tells you that to be at home tomorrow at 10 a.m. because the sales rep from PHRG is coming visit you. And um, all this data, including everything real time, so when a sales rep goes to uh, the appointment, he can then uh, um, report it in. And all the uh, accepted appointment, rejected appointments, uh, uh, the sales rep performance, everything is pushed to a, um, a CRM platform that has a mobile version. What is impressive here is the number of calls they run last year, which is over 5 million calls in 2012. And they're looking at doubling that figure this year to 10 million. So that's one call every five seconds. It's not 50 CPS we were debating last night, but it's still an impressive amount of calls, especially because they're all live and all of them go through databases and uh, web services of various. So this is an Italian service I built. And uh, what they do is uh, a prepaid translation service for travelers. So you buy a phone card that has a international number in it, and also a few others for countries that don't support that international number. Uh, you can call that number, and they will uh, make you um, get you in contact with someone that speaks the language you ask for. What happens here is that actually it's sort of a very large distributed call center so the translators are not physically in the um, in an office or somewhere but uh, they're at home sitting at their computers so they have access to a uh, soft phone or on their cell phones where they can use an app with develop or even just their cell phone as in getting called on cell phone um, what you do here a division is used for billing and credit management those prepaid cards have a set number of minutes that gets decreased we whisper into the channels and telling the people that credit is low, and all that kind of uh, interesting functionality. And we also do, uh, the core of the application is doing the translator search with AMD detection and adaptive selection. This is fancy terms to say we basically, uh, say we want someone that speaks Chinese, we will call the first in the list, and if it's, you know that many uh, cell phone companies actually have some sort of uh, answering machine if, you, if your phone is actually turned off. So we need to detect that because we don't need, we, we want the person to speak to a live rap, not to a, uh, an answering machine, obviously. So we need to uh, detect that. And we also do adaptive selection. So people that call the same, uh, uh, the service for the same language on subsequent times tend to be connected with the same rap as possible, which is important because if you had an issue where you went, were on vacation in a place you don't speak the language from, and you call again, you probably want to speak with the person that handled the situation the first time. This service is actually going quite well. They have over 30,000 customers. So, what are we going to do in the future? This is a version now. All the apps you saw are in production, live, with thousands of uh, users. So, I will say, we've, we've been tackling scaling pretty well, so there's a lot, still a lot to do. So, WebRTC. Everybody loves WebRTC, right? Yay! So, Addition can obviously perform all third party call control since Addition does not sit either in the signal and path or in the media path. So, we don't really care about WebRTC in the sense that we can handle a, a WebRTC applications in the same way we handle normal applications. So, with WebRTC and SIP and other, what we built on other projects I cannot uh, mention by name. 
uh, we built multiple device tracking and switching. So what happens is that when you call, uh, you say you're on your cell phone, you get to your computer, you want to sit down and not hold the phone to your ear, you can just press a button and send the call to your computer. You get up, you go in the living room, you move the call to your uh, smart TV or your iPad or whatever without any loss of conversation or uh, signal. Next thing we're going to be doing is protocol convergence. So we're going to uh, bring XMPP is a ready first class citizen in addition. We're going to uh, integrate messaging and presence in the framework so you can get easy events in the same format you get them from uh, uh, the telephony platforms. All of these are already implemented in upcoming products, uh, which I cannot mention by name, but you'll see them when you, you recognize them when you see them. So, just what's going to happen? <laughs> Addition 3.0 is currently at the planning stage, and we're deciding what we wanted to it. What we decided on is what we want a unified communication platform. So XMP, all XMPP events and uh, uh, messages will be handled by addition in a unified format so we can have messaging controllers in addition to voice controller. Simply treating, uh, what our idea is treating messaging as the, another kind of media, like SIP does. So all, everything is unified. We need better ASR support. Currently our uh, ISR support is limited to what the platforms can do. We would like to detach from uh, platform specifics of every ASR engine and build some uh, uh, abstract layer you can use so you can have ASR even if you don't know how it works better. And we're revamping the component structure, which is maybe something that is not that interesting at this level, but uh, the components are uh, quite complex at the moment. Some of them need to be broken up in parts. Look, we actually are at 9.30, so. Oh, well, come to Audition Conf 2013. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>